What's up guys, hello and welcome to the Car Passion Channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to shoot fire from your Miata. But let me start with this. As cool as it looks to shoot flames, the explosions caused by two-step can be potentially dangerous to your exhaust valves, your turbo, your muffler, and other parts of your engine. They might also cause damage to your hearing, as well as the others around the car, especially when used excessively. For that reason, I will not be taking responsibility for any damage done to your engine, your hearing, or any police calls made on your behalf due to suspected gunshots. I'm also gonna be showing you how to get the performance benefits two-step without the potentially harmful explosions. So without further ado, let's get this started. To begin with a brief overview of two-step, let me start with a very common misconception. Two-step and anti-lag are two different things. Anti-lag is dumping fuel into the exhaust and igniting, and it can actually produce a lot of boost with the turbo with the car standing still. That is different from two-step. Two-step is just a new set of rev limiter parameters that's activated when you put your foot on the clutch pedal. Two-step does have the potential to shoot flames and produce a little bit of boost, but it's still different from an anti-lag system or ALS. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Mega Squirt, but the setup should be very similar with all engine management systems. So what the heck is two-step? When you put your foot on the clutch pedal, a new rev limiter parameter is activated. What does that mean? Basically, it sets your rev limiter to a value that you chose, say 3,500 RPM, that's going to stop the revs at 3,500 and help the car get off the line faster. It's kind of a form of launch control. Now, it can also change ignition timing and whether you're cutting spark or cutting fuel. Three-step is essentially the same thing, but you're adding another rev limiter to the mix for what's called flat foot shifting or no lift shifting. So essentially you'll have two different rev limiters, one for launch control and one for flat foot shifting, and they can be different RPMs. Which one activates is gonna depend at what RPM you put the clutch in at. I know it sounds a little complicated right now, but I'll get into the explanation when I show you how to set it up. Before you can set up two-step, you have to be sure of one thing. The ECU has to know when the clutch is in and when the clutch is not in. And it's actually really easy. In fact, your stock Miata has that set up already. So here's your ECU, whether it be stock, Mega Squirt, or another aftermarket system. Here's your clutch pedal. Your ECU's got a signal going into this switch. It's also got another signal coming back out going into the ECU. When you put your clutch pedal to the floor, it pushes this button right here and it completes the circuit. Then the ECU knows when the clutch pedal is depressed. Now since your stock ECU does that already, when you plug in a Mega Squirt ECU, all the wiring's still there, it should just work, right? wrong. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, but sometimes, for whatever reason, the Mega Squirt does not know when the clutch is in. I think it's just a problem with how the boards are built. One of the circuits just isn't put together right or something like that, but I'm going to show you two known flaws on a 1.6 and 1.8 to get the clutch safety switch working. I've seen on a couple of 94 to 97 Miatas where the launch control just flat out will not work and the solution is just to unplug the neutral switch. That's the switch that's on the transmission, tells the ECU if it's in neutral or not. For whatever reason, with the neutral safety switch plugged in, the ECU does not know what's going on with the clutch. Another quirk I've seen with every single 1.6 that I've ever set up launch control with is the neutral switch and the clutch switch are reversed inside the Mega Squirt. So I have a very simple fix for this and I'll show you how to do it. This is the neutral switch that's threaded into your transmission. Don't get it confused with the reverse switch. If you don't know which is which, you're gonna have to Google it. There's a plug right here. These are wires. So there's wires coming from the ECU and it's plugged into your neutral safety switch. This is the switch that's on the floor behind your clutch pedal. Not the one that's up on top that controls cruise control, but on the floor, your clutch presses a button on this when it's all the way down. And then you got a harness that's plugged right into it, and these are some more wires. What I have had to do to get the launch control to work on my car, unplug the neutral switch completely, unplug the clutch switch completely. And when you unplug the clutch switch, you're gonna have to put a jumper right here, just a little piece of wire, that jumps the two prongs together because your car won't start if you just unplug the clutch switch. Wire the harness from your neutral switch into your clutch switch. It doesn't matter which wire is which, it's only opening and closing a circuit. To give you an idea of where these wires go, I just had to run two wires from my clutch switch underneath the pedal through the firewall down to the side of the transmission so I could wire in the neutral switch harness.
One surefire way to know if you need to do that mod is if your launch control only works when the car is in neutral. When the shifter's in neutral, your launch control works. If it's in gear and it does not work at all, you need to do that mod. This is our Tuner Studio interface. Come up to Boost Advanced and come down here to Launch Control. That's gonna open up the Launch Control menu and then we have several different settings that need to be adjusted. The first one here is just gonna let you either turn everything off, set up just Launch Control or set up Launch Control and flat foot shifting. Next one here, the input pin. This is gonna vary based on your car and which version of Megasquirt you have. Typically, it's gonna be the launch pin, but that's something that you're gonna to have to figure out. That's basically the signal from the clutch switch that lets the ECU know if the clutch is in or out. Next is the launch hard limit. This is the RPM that your limiter will be set to if you're sitting still in the car, you put your clutch to the floor and you apply throttle. This is gonna be your limiter here. And this is gonna take some experimentation to figure out what is gonna work best for you. The soft limit zone is when the timing retard is activated. So if this is 100, the timing retard is going to be activated at 4100, 100 RPM less than your hard limit. And it's gonna be retarded to five degrees before a top dead center. If you set this to zero or to negative five, that's when you're gonna start shooting fire because the ignition event is gonna be happening much later and the exhaust valve is gonna be partially open while that fuel is still combusting. Enable launch when TPS above. This means anytime my throttle is above 3%, it's going to activate the launch control. Limiter method. This is what the ECU does to control the RPM. So you have spark cut only, fuel cut only, and spark and fuel. I leave my car on spark and fuel cut because I do not want the explosions and I do not want to hurt my turbo or my muffler or anything like that. If you use spark cut only, that's when you're gonna start getting the flames because it's gonna cut the spark, but the, the injectors are gonna stay active. And as soon as the spark comes back, it's gonna ignite all the fuel that the injectors have been spitting and you're gonna get the flames. Flat shift arming RPM. This means above 4,500 RPM, if you put the clutch in, your new limiter is gonna be right here, whatever you set your flat shift limit to. So you're going through the gears, you're at 7,000 RPM, you put your foot on the clutch, but you leave your foot on the throttle as well. It's gonna hold the engine at 5,500 RPM until your foot comes back off the clutch. And then this is the same as above here. It's gonna retard the timing to five degrees before top dead center. Now the first thing I do after setting up launch control in Megasquirt is you wanna make sure it's working properly. How I usually do that is I'll set the limiter really low, say 2,500, and I'll just give it a test to make sure it's working. So I'm sitting here with the car idling and what I'm gonna do is put my clutch all the way in, use some throttle and see if the rev limiter has been lowered. so we're in business. Like I said before, you're gonna have to experiment to see what RPM works best for you, but this is a little demonstration with a 3000 RPM limit and a pretty mild launch. Now I'll set the timing to five degrees after top dead center and set the limiter type to spark cut only, which will leave the fuel in the system. It's gonna shoot some flames, make some loud noises, and then I'll probably have to find a new spot to film. Okay, we're going, we're going. We'll finish this up somewhere else. All right, this looks safe enough. So there's something you should know about flat shift and launch control that I didn't really figure out until after I set it up, and that is it really interferes with rev match downshifting. So you get out into the canyon, you're trying to blast up a couple gears, trying to get those revs up, and your limiter is activating because your clutch is in. So one thing that I have figured out to solve that problem, I put this little switch in here which activates and deactivates the launch control and flat shift. So I always have it set up in Megasquirt, it's always turned on, but with this switch right here, I can physically turn it on and off without my laptop. So do you remember the wires that we ran from the transmission harness to the clutch switch? All you have to do is intercept one of those wires, either one, with a switch. So when you turn the switch off, it opens the circuit. The ECU will think the clutch is always out. And then when you turn the switch on, it'll complete the circuit, and the ECU will see that the clutch is in when it's actually in. So now I'll go ahead and demonstrate some flat shifting. And the biggest advantage you get with a turbo car flat shifting is not the explosions in the exhaust. Everyone thinks that helps keep the turbo spooled up. The really the biggest benefit of two-step is your throttle plate stays open 
in between shifts. So your blow off valve never releases any pressure. The pressure just keeps flowing through the engine. The spark is cut so you're not making any power and it can hold the revs at a certain um, RPM. But since the blow off valve doesn't open, the turbo keeps spinning. And then when you get back in the next gear, it's like this, the boost builds really quickly as opposed to a normal shift where you know all that pressure gets released. Dude, that is so fun. That is so freaking cool. It just, that feels awesome. It almost feels like a V8 going through the gears because the boost is just like right there. I just data logged a couple pulls and I found out that when you're shifting normally, letting off the throttle, it takes about seven tenths of a second from the time you're at full throttle again to the time the turbo can reach 10 pounds of boost. Using flat shift, it takes about three tenths of a second for the turbo to reach full boost again. That's a pretty big difference. Even if you have your fireballs turned off, it still makes a very big difference to have that flat shift when you're going through the gears. A few tenths of a second doesn't really sound like that big of a deal, but the first time you experience it, it's really amazing. I mean, it literally builds boost twice as fast with the flat shift engaged. And it helps even more with bigger turbos. If you follow my other channel, you already know that I put the GT 2860R on this car, so it's very laggy. And just to make that much of a difference between gears is just really awesome just by pressing a couple buttons, you know, changing a couple settings in Mega Square. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I know I've been promising it for a long time, so hopefully it was everything you expected. Don't forget to subscribe for more Miata content. Speaking of subscribers, the channel is getting ready to roll over 30,000 subscribers. And this time, instead of giving something away to one person or just a couple people, I want to be able to give back to all of you. So this Saturday, May 28th, 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to be doing a live stream on my channel. I'm going to be chatting it up with all you guys. I'm going to stream for probably at least two hours, maybe longer, and it's just going to be fun. Look up your time zones to figure out what time that's going to be around you if you want to join in the stream. It's going to be a good time. I hope to see you all there. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one. be very similar for any engine management system.